she pushes it sometimes. Men struggle to understand. Um, everyone can coach a boys team. And the women's game, we were fuming about it. I'm Harry Beckwith. Uh, I'm joined here with Phil Morgan, uh, Crystal Palace and Wales star. Hello, Phil. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Harry. So I'm going to jump straight into it, Crystal Palace. You signed in July from Coventry United. How was that for you? Uh, good, exciting. Um, they approached me um, Christmas time before, yeah. um, but then when they came for me again in uh, summertime, I just kind of knew that I had to go there. I wanted to play in a club in London because yeah. um, I felt like that's where I'd be seen the most. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to move to London anyway and play there. Uh, so when Palace came in for me, it was kind of like a no, no brainer yeah. and uh, the the manager was great and I had a few conversations with him and yeah, it was just a done deal really. What is it about London that attracted you to play there? The city life, the city uh, life. It's very part, different to party home. Girl, is it? Yeah, yeah, very different to home. Um, it's just, they say London never sleeps and it really is like that. Um, but it is nice to have a bit of both, come back yeah. home in the country. But How yes, does uh, living in London differ from living here in Wales? It's just alive all the time. And traffic is mad. Like you go a mile in the car and it'll take you half an hour. Like it's just very different to home, but it's yeah. good. Yeah. So you mentioned there about uh, the transfer from Palace to uh, from Coventry to Palace. So how did that affect you, given the you know the circumstances of COVID? Yeah. So the twenty nineteen um, no twenty twenty sorry um, season was cut short um, in March. So I didn't train with Cov or didn't finish my full season with them, which. I was gutted about because I was yeah. really enjoying it there, um, but yeah, the the move to Palace was kind of an easy decision when they they came. How does it differ playing for Palace as uh, to Coventry with the whole you know possibly a step up from Coventry? Some might say. Um, yeah, I wanted to progress in the league, and I feel like Palace was that move for me, um, as well as I wanted to live in London and play for a London team. Um, but yeah, I really, the girls there are great and the coaching, I know the coach before um, oh. I moved and um, he's great and he knew me as a player. So I kind of had them connections already before um, leaving. Um, so it was, like I said, it was an easy decision for me to go, but I, I'm really loving it at Palace and I feel like I can really progress as a player there. How do you think Palace as a club do in promoting football for young girls? Yeah, they're great. They're really good. They do a lot of stuff in the community. Uh, they call it Palace for Life, where they have um, us girls going into hospitals or the community and giving back. Um, I know a few girls are coaching this weekend, um, some some primary school, I think, primary school oh, kids. Right. Um, and it's good to like give back and be role models to people who yeah. are playing now. So yeah, they're really great with that. So um, obviously we've spoken about Palace. Uh, what's it like playing for Wales? What, how, how do you feel playing on that Welsh jersey? I get asked this a lot in interviews. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, Everybody asks, what's it like putting the shirt on? And it's so hard to put into words. Every player yeah. struggles to put it into words, but it's just pride, passion. I mean, I love my country yeah. so much. Um, I've been brought up to appreciate where I live. Um, so yeah, when I put that shirt on. Um, You're representing your country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whether it's walking around in a hotel, wearing the kit, it's exactly the same. I'm just, yeah, proud and uh, very, very um privileged privileged yeah moving on to another topic that i'll be covering in my blog is the 2019 women's world cup mm -hmm. so you weren't a part of that however i'm sure you'll have noticed a significant difference in women's football as a result of the tournament in france yeah i was um working for the faw at the time and um we weren't involved we didn't qualify uh, narrowly missed again gutting yeah to england next, as well ne to next england. time next time next yeah. time um, but I I seen the difference of just us promoting it, like Wales yeah. promoting it. Like we weren't involved, but we were still. Oh, have you watched the exactly, the Women's yeah. World Cup? And you probably watched a few games I yourself. I did indeed. Yes. 
Um, so it was really good and we had really good coverage and really good media, yeah. which we don't usually get. No, Only recently we, we've been getting. Um, so yeah, even though we weren't involved, it made a really good impact to Wales. Yeah, do you think for the teams who were involved, it would have boosted women's football in those countries? Oh yeah, 100%. So, the attendances at women's games and the sponsorship in win- women's games went up, up by like 50% or something crazy. Um, and it's just because we were seen. We were yeah. out there and it was being shown on BBC and BT Sport and Sky Sports and we had all the coverage. Yeah. Um, and that's what we need. We just need more people watching us and then people enjoy the football that we play. It's, it's football at the end of the day. Um, in addition to the uh, viewership, sponsorship, I'm sure also was boosted. Do you notice mm-hmm. this yourself as a player? Um, not myself, no, which is disappointing. Yeah. So Nike or someone, Adidas, come, go on. So you're still shopping at Sports Direct on, yeah, the, on the weekends, yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, no, it's, it's difficult. The top level, um, they do receive a lot more, um, but the people in the league below, there's a big jump. And yeah. the, there's still a lot to go um, for women's football. Um, but is it great at the moment? Yes. Could it be better? A lot better. Yeah. Because there's such a jump. People at home might know Megan Rapinoe. She was a, a huge star from the 2019 World Cup. How do you feel that players such as Megan Rapinoe have used the platform? Um, she's a controversial character. Yeah, we can agree um, on that. Yeah, a lot of people think she's very outspoken. Um, I think it's great. I think someone needs to do it. Someone yeah. needs to step up. Um, and do if there were, do you think you could do that? Do you think I want to in the future? Yeah. If, if I have the platform to, then I would use my platform. Yeah. Um, and th- that's what she's doing and it's great. That's yeah. what you want from a player. Um, I just think she pushes it sometimes and Perhaps. men struggle to understand yeah. uh, because they just think she just talks rubbish all the time. Yeah. But there's purpose to what she's saying. Obviously, I'd go for equal pay. If someone says you can get paid the same, then yes. But like I said about there's lots of, there's a lot more to go. Yeah. We don't, I don't get boots. I have to buy my own boots. I'm a professional footballer. I shouldn't have to buy my own boots. No. Men get given boots. Men get sponsorship, sponsorship, media coverage. Companies asking for all sorts. We don't get that because we don't get seen. So for me, I would rather equal opportunities more than anything. Yeah. Helen Ward was recently involved in some controversy within the media after not being able to play as a result of COVID despite being a professional footballer mm-hmm. for Wales where mm-hmm. you obviously played with her. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about said uh, government guidelines, which saw Watford, a team below the championship, mm-hmm. uh, not being allowed to play, despite her having Wales games coming up, when nine-year-old academy boys were still allowed to play? Yeah, there was a lot of uproar at that point, which should have happened. It did. Um, and the women's game, we were fuming about it. Um, how can... Helen Ward, who plays for Watford and a Welsh international who's preparing for a game against Belarus, not train, yeah. two weeks prior to the camp. And like he said, academy boys were playing. Um, and that's what I mean about the equal opportunities. Yeah. Like she went, she wasn't an elite player, but the academies under nines were, were able to play. Exactly, yeah. And similarly to that, the academy girls couldn't train, but they were on the same level as yeah. the boys. But they said that they weren't elite enough. So I'm going to finish off by talking a bit more about yourself yeah. and your future in football. Yeah. I know that during your ACL uh, recovery, which you suffered back in 2017, mm-hmm. you did your coaching badges. Uh, could we see a future in the dugout for you? Um, yeah. Um, not manager, maybe. No? No, a head coach. Head I, coach. I don't like yeah. the pressure. I don't the responsibility. Yeah. I do want to coach. I love coaching. Um, and I love coaching girls. Yeah. Because um, I feel like I'm giving back. Um, everyone can coach a boys team, but it's very special when you have a female coach. I've had a lot of coaches in, in my time, and I've connected really well with the female coaches, and I want to be that for someone. Yeah. So um, I also understand you've been uh, working with Tottenham. Mm-hmm. It was an opportunity for me to coach, and that's what I wanted to do. Um, so I'm currently obviously playing with um, Palace and then coaching with Tottenham. Um, and yeah, Tottenham have just given me opportunities to do different things in the community and I've loved it so far. So Tottenham, where do you think that can go? Do you think maybe through that you could find a link to maybe the Tottenham manager, possibly? I actually know the Tottenham manager, the one that's 
they they've just had a changeover. Yeah, they have. Um, Rianne Skinner's there now, and I actually have played under Rianne yeah, as an so assistant manager. Yeah, um, you never know. You never so know. We'll see. But would, um, would you like like that step up? Do you think you're ready to go up to the women's super league? No. 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 Why? Is I, that? I'm still really young. And I've got a lot to it, It's a big step. And yeah. with the foreign players coming in now and the level, like the fact that Alex Morgan's in this, this league yes. and in the country. Do you think that her insane. transferring on loan to uh, Tottenham has helped promote women's football as a brand? Yes, I think it's great that people like her are coming over. We had a conversation before really? the yes. interview and you said, I want to go see her. I do very much yeah, want to see her. because you want to see anyone, her. If anyone watching can arrange that, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's what she's... She oh, she's, yeah, she, yeah. she's got more followers than Hot Tottenham men's players. The Tottenham men's team. Exa- yeah, exactly. Exactly, and that just shows. So, yeah. yeah, it's great that people that she even wants to come to this league because yeah. at the moment it it is the best league in the world. I think that's all the questions I've got for you. So, um, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you.